morning. We're going to get started. Um, as you can see, we're all spread out today, um, but we are here for the second March Hoboken Board of Education meeting. This is a special meeting for the adoption of the budget. Um, and just to clarify, the board will not actually be voting on the budget, but rather um, this is the opportunity for the administration to present the budget to the board, um, and now it's in the board's hands to review. Um, it will then be submitted to the county. There will be a few meetings in May um, where there will be a, a detailed budget hearing and then a second uh, meeting where the board will actually vote on the budget. And between now and then, we'll have the ability to meet with the business administrator to ask any questions um, and fully dive into the budget. Um, with that being said, Ms. Good, can you please read the statement of compliance? This meeting is being held in conformity to the Open Public Meeting Act NJSA 10 colon 4-6. Proper public notice of the meeting was published in the local papers on March 14, 2020. If any board member or member of the public in attendance believe that the meeting is in violation of the Open Public Meeting Act, the Hope Open Board of Education requests that they make a statement at this time. The board wishes to make those in attendance aware that this meeting is being recorded on video and will be broadcast by the board at a later date on CATV Channel 77 and FIOS Channel 46. The full meeting recording will also be made available on board docs, which can be accessed through the district homepage. The Hoboken Board of Education is committed to preserving the decorum of the public process and is mindful that we live in an electronic age of computers, cell phones, and other electronic communication devices. Nevertheless, we respectfully request that all meeting participants kindly silence their electronic devices during the course of the meeting. And if use of a device is necessary, we ask that you please leave the meeting room if you need to conduct personal business. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Good, can we take the roll call, please? Ms. Catamatory. Ms. Delera? Here. Mr. Delator? Here. Ms. Kana? Here. Mr. Kluffel? Here. Ms. McGurk? Here. Ms. Simons? Here. Ms. Takarian? Here. Ms. Angley? Here. All board members are present. Okay, at this time I'd like to turn the meeting over to Dr. Johnson. Okay, so I am going to just provide a few updates regarding the first couple of days of virtual learning. Um, so we as a district kind of jumped onto the planning for these first two weeks relatively quickly. Um, I feel like we're, we were in very good shape. We didn't need to close school for planning. Um, we also didn't need to like take days away from spring break or our 181st day, which is the one extra day that we do have in order to push it back here. So we still have a bank um, of, of days. We um, have been getting a lot of feedback from parents. 95% um, of it is very positive. 5%, um, so I'm not a Hoboken mommy, but people tell me on Hoboken mommies. Um, there's some complaints here and there about take away the work, it's too much, there's too much going on. Um, I just got an email this morning from someone who screenshotted me um, some posts on Hoboken Mommies. We don't have the ability nor the um, permission to remove work. We, we must continue to provide it. Um, what, the way that I'm responding to that, um, to any parent who would contact me, um, would just simply be, you're a parent, make a decision. Your children's work is going to be counted as either completed or not completed as the kids are in older grades, graded, not graded, etc. So we're not physically in your home to be able to tell you to um, make sure the child is finishing every single assignment. We're relying on parents to assist us in that matter. So if there are people that are feeling a little stressed by trying to get everything done by 3 o'clock, please understand that this is actually considered home instruction by the Department of Education. So what that means is 
there really isn't a start and end time of the school day. So if your children take a two hour break, they can take a two hour break and they can complete their work and keep going at other times. There may be some children that might be feeling a little anxiety or stress in one given day and may need to carry some assignments over to the next day. That's all okay, that's all okay. Um, I also want you to know that um, I put a note out in the Herald that the Saturday and Sunday, the day six and day seven, and then on the back end, um, day 13 and day 14, we added those additional hours because home instruction, technically, the definition is continuous instruction for one week. It's calendar days, not five school days. And because home instruction is a short and truncated um, school day, home instruction typically can run from Monday through Sunday um, all the way all the way through. So what we did to ensure that we were not going to get ourselves in any kind of hot water at the end in terms of not being able to count the 180 required days, we developed lessons all the way into Saturday and Sunday. Parents have asked, does that mean my children have to go to school on Saturday and Sunday in the house? The answer to that is no. Those Saturday and Sunday lessons, we have marked them now extended or optional. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason for that because some parents um, are saying their children are moving at a very fast pace and they're completing lessons. So by all means, go into the Saturday and Sunday lessons. If your children are having some difficulty and can get through the first five days, that's okay as well. We tried to make Saturday and Sunday standalone kind of lessons so they would be considered extended. We're in the process right now of sending out instructions for all of our faculty all of our faculty on Zoom um, so that we can create some consistency across the district with teachers, particularly the um, homeroom K-5 to and preschool teachers so that the children can see the teachers' faces live and talk to them a little bit. At the middle school level um, and the high school level, originally I said, eh, I don't know about that, but the teachers seem to be interested in wanting to provide some face-to-face -face time, so we certainly are going to distribute those instructions to everyone. Um, We'll let parents know as well, and we'll provide instructions for parents also to be able to um, help their child log into that at a given time when a teacher announces it. Um, in terms of lunches, we have been distributing lunch to Hoboken Public School families, Ola, Hoboken Charter, and Elysian. The numbers are on the low side right now in terms of lunch distribution, um, in terms of families. so. So while there may be um, 15 to 25 families a day coming, some families are picking up food for four children that live in the household that attend school. Um, so from that perspective, we're getting tallies on exactly how many lunches we're serving. I also wanted to let you know that Ola, um, their spring break was actually the one school that was different than the public school and the two other charter schools. So what they are doing is they're shifting their spring break on, on the record from the week before Easter to the week after Easter to be consistent with all of us so that food service can continue for their children as well. So we've been in communication. We did a conference call. I did a conference call with all the charters yesterday to keep them up to date on what's happening and what's going on. Um, and the other thing that I wanted to tell you a little bit about is um, the summer. So we do not have guidance as of yet as how long this will go. Right now we are closed through March 27th with an anticipated reopening date on March 30th. Um, there are a lot of schools across the state that have already announced April 20th as their day back. Um, we are not going to announce that yet because there has not been guidance from the governor's office nor the commissioner's office. So what we are going to do is continue to look at this in blocks of two weeks at a time, um, and then we'll go from and then we'll go from there. However, 
as, as um, effective as our teachers are right now and our staff members are in trying to really stay on top of everything and communicate with parents and email and do everything they have to in Google Classrooms, um, the concern obviously is for our special education children. It's also for our um, children that receive RTI services. Um, so we're in the process right now also of planning. So this, the state originally did not give any guidance on the ability to extend extended school year. In fact, that was a, it, it kind of started off as a no. Yesterday, um, we made some calls and asked if the district had the ability to, even if it was not required, to extend the extended school year program in order to be able to truly provide compensatory related services for children who need OT, PT, counseling, and speech. And the answer was it's it would be a district decision. It's not going to be put out statewide. So right now our uh, director of special services is working with child study team to figure out what that would look like to extend the extended school year program to be a six-week program um, going all the way until 3 o'clock. Um, with that being said, then we're also in the process of looking at how to create um, coursework in the summer with some um, teacher guidance for children that we're struggling in the areas of math and language arts literacy. So that's something else that we're already in the process of doing. I also want you to know by the end of today, our next two weeks of plans after these first two weeks will be completely finished as well. We'll be able to post them and get them up and going. The faculty has been fantastic working with Ms. Rodriguez Gomez and we're really in good shape. Our goal is to be two weeks ahead of every two week process. Um, so that's where we stand with that. So does anyone have any questions that you would like answered? So I have a couple of questions. Okay. First, okay. There is. Yep. Mm -hmm. So um, we we are in the process right now of looking into that. We're, we're, our hope is to be able to provide the parents as a school district with the ability to ensure that they can get into Zoom. Um, we are on the fence with a, the liability issue of opening that up for all students. Um, we, we did complete creating Gmail accounts for every child at the K, even K2 level, pre-K2 level, to be able to um, set up Google Classrooms for the little ones because we're not going to be able to continue to provide, you know, and mail packets to every family. Um, so we did do that. Um, but in terms of setting it up for kids, we would feel more comfortable if the parents independently set that up for child-to-child -child contact because HIV for us, even though we're not in session, we are still required to field and investigate all HIV um, situations, even online. So we're watching. Thank you. I okay.
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we are um, home delivering to our homeless families that are outside of Hoboken. So what does that mean? We have some homeless families that live in Hoboken that have come from elsewhere into Hoboken deemed homeless because they are living with a family member. Um, a relative or friend, but we also have Hoboken children that became homeless and then moved elsewhere that we are still responsible for the child's education. Um, and so as a result of that, we are providing uh, Mr. William James, our residency officer, is delivering those meals. Um, food service is contacting families on a daily basis that have not picked food up. Um, some are asking us to, you know, their neighbor is coming. Can they pick it up for them? We're verifying if the answer is yes, absolutely. We don't need multiple families if they're next door to each other picking it up. So we're allowing that to happen. A lot of families are telling us they are not in need yet. Um, so, so what we decided to do as for starting next week is to package more than one day at a time. The meals, they're, they're, the meals that are um, being served right now are, are specialized meals with a, sh a particular shelf life so that families do have the ability to pick more than one up at a time. They're utilizing fruit um, that lasts a long time, so oranges and, and um, apples and things like that. Um, so, so we're going to be trying to package multiple meals for multiple days at a time so a family can come on Monday and maybe pick up their food till Wednesday and then not have to come back until Thursday and Friday. Um, so, so there's a few things that we're working out that way. Um, and also the Chromebook distribution um, is going really well. We had a number of people pick the Chromebooks up yesterday um, and day before. We have again today set up and Friday set up. We also noticed something that was really interesting and that was that um, we ordered jet packs for the families that don't have any internet access and it turns out that the majority of families, we only have a, a, a bank of families that don't have access or um, not access, Altice or Optimum. Those are the families that will get the jet pack with the laptop. So the other thing is that we, I kind of saw a few comments on Facebook about families that are kind of going a little um, like nuts over the fact that they have one computer at home and three children. Um, they wouldn't be on our list as being identified as not having computer access because they have a computer and they have internet. So we're taking care of first the families that have no technology at all, then we're going to move to, um, if someone reaches out to us and says, like, we only have one laptop and there are three children trying to work, then we'll move forward with um, the distribution on, on that end. Okay? Any other questions? Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Yes, because they're they're it's it's a one pickup. It's breakfast and lunch being picked up at once instead of um, having people come back and forth. So it's one pickup, two meals for each child. And now, like I said, we're beginning to think about if that's the case, we're going to package them up as a longer period of time. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're in the process of right now calculating out how many hours it would be. So for example, the child who receives the most amount of related services, for example, and 
And if we calculated that out, how many hours would that actually be? Because our standard will be set by that. Um, so I'm, I'm not 100% sure how that will work, but we're trying to calculate it out by hours. Okay. okay? Um, but more information will, will definitely follow. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if there's just a, just a comment that maybe there's a way to kind of parse it out or maybe do it like a little bit. I don't know, but yeah. it's really, really, really important. Mm-hmm. And that becomes a big problem. Um, the other question I had was, I just wanted to, I know, reiterate, because even though you put it out there and you said it all the time, you tried to explain it, the days six and seven and the days 13 and 14 are really supposed to be extension of options. If that work is not done, mm -hmm. is that an issue? No. Okay. Not at all. One quick question, and it's something that seems to be bubbling up as the uncertainty of when this is going to be over, mm -hmm. is related to the park and whether or not the park will go mm -hmm. on, the park will be canceled. So I don't know if we have any guidance from the state and all that. So we were on a conference call. Uh, I was on a conference call a couple days ago with the commissioner, and um, someone did ask the question, and um, it was not really answered. It was we are playing this, you know, one day at a time, and um, and that's that. Although there was some talk on the federal level of um, providing a waiver for this year. That's where it will come from. So, so once that's in place, then states will have the ability to um, either agree with that or ap approve that or not approve that. A, a state can't eliminate the required testing because it's linked to our federal funding. So like New Jersey can't just say we're not going to do park because if that happened, then like our district, any district would not receive Title I funds, Title II, 2A funds, and so on and so forth. So we really do need to wait for the state to come out with guidance on that, um, and they haven't yet. So, but we'll, we'll keep, actually, I'll include a little description of that in the Herald just to say, you know, there may be some people wondering about this, and we'll put that out. Uh, well, I'm, I'm assuming that it would go there, so he would then make the determination if there was a federal order to to do the waiver. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So we opened kindergarten registration as like an, an open enrollment. So we've been having people come. We had people come prior to the school closure. Um, uh, Mr. Arnone um, set up a new system through Genesis, which is an online registration process. Um, where you can actually upload all your documents. So I've been seeing a lot of registrations of for families, like um, kindergarten, but also second grade, fourth grade, all over the place. We'll put something out for those that have been selected in the lottery um, to begin to register. Um, but I, but I definitely think that. Um, it would be best if everyone just sat tight. If they have a spot and they were selected, like the lottery, you know, was was finished, and or the kindergarten families know what school they're going to already, we're, we just roll kindergarten over. Pre-K may be a little bit of a different story, but we still have plenty of time. You know, the the daycares aren't registering kids yet for next year, so we, we're not either. I, 
it was the, the uh, no, I believe it was March. I'll, I'll check for you and, and, and get that out. I'll get that out. If, if anything, everything is just going to get pushed, pushed. Um, so m there are a few that they just email. Yeah, they, they just email. Yeah. I don't want to put that out in the Herald yet until we finish getting it to everybody. Correct. No. Yeah, we, we have um we have about um we had approximately eighty families that needed a Chromebook and we had plenty in our lending library for it. So we're not depleting, we have over a thousand thousands of them. So the reality is if you know there isn't a shortage of Chromebooks. No. 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 Correct. The only thing that we have learned from this that we are going to begin doing is um, as we move forward, we're going to begin purchasing Chromebooks with the internet card embedded in, in it. Um, they are a little bit more expensive, but well worth it. Thank you. And also, just, I think that the, um, the daily uh, world is amazing. I know that's probably a lot of work for your team, but communication is great. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. We will. We will. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Johnson, for that great update. Um, I know I've been really impressed seeing what my kids are doing at home and how organized the district is. Um, and thank you for being so proactive as we take each day one day at a time. Um, okay, Ms. Good, over to you for the budget presentation. We'll start with the, I'll start with the first slide and then you can go. Okay, so one of the things that we um, published, and Vicki, I don't know if you have the ability to check um, your email during this time. Um, we, we posted that um, we were going to be having this meeting at 10 o'clock and um, that from 8 o'clock this morning on, all of the budget materials would be posted on the website. They were posted on the website. Um, we opened up a public comment um, period of time um, so that people could email questions in ahead of time, asking them for their name, their address, and the actual question so that we could read them into public comment and then get back to the individuals with any questions. Did we have any? Okay, so we didn't have any. So what we'll do is um, maybe in Friday's Herald, I'll put an overview of um, the budget presentation. So with that being said, we'll start off kind of with the end in mind and work backwards. So uh, our, our total budget for the 2021 school year is $65,324,803. Um, and, and what I would like to do is just explain to you how the budget tax uh, levy increases are being broken out and then Joyce will go through piece by piece so I'm kind of just giving the you know 500 um, foot view um, overview for you so as you know we are required to um, stay within a 2% tax levy cap although um, because we um, have the ability now to go beyond the 2% tax levy cap with adjustment waivers um, and because of our former Abbott status. However, we are staying within the guidelines of the 2% tax levy cap as well as one waiver, okay? There, there are multiple waivers, but we're taking advantage of one waiver, okay? So 
what does the 2% tax levy cap equate to, or the tax levy equate to? It equates to $966,136. Interestingly, that 2% tax levy plus our budget, our budget itself, um, includes our contractual um, salary and benefit increases. Um, it also maintains our current staff level, okay, so there will be no reduction in staff as a result of this budget. It maintains all of the curriculum development and implementation cycle um, factors. So as you know, each year we kind of hone in on a different um, content area for curricular revisions, updates on textbooks and supplies and things like that. We have a, a whole cycle that we um, use. So that cycle will continue within this budget. It will not be halted or stopped. Um, it also maintains all of our um, curricular programs, our co-curricular programs, including um, all special education staff and some new and existing programs. So in our committee meetings over the last month um, or so, we kind of talked a little bit in the curriculum committee meeting about the reshaping or re-enhancement of the autism program. I wanna make it really clear. We are not scrapping a program and bringing a new autism program in. What we are doing is enhancing the program that we have in place right now. We are also looking at a program to enhance um, our ability to deal with um, children with some behavioral challenges. Um, so all of that falls within the budget as well as the 2% tax levy cap. In that, it also includes any um, increases in um, utility costs and things like that. Okay, so with that being said, that would be our budget, okay? However, the state has um, kind of deemed that based on our enrollment trends that we have um, an additional, we have the ability to plan for the anticipated 296 additional students. And as a result of that, we have received um, an enrollment adjustment waiver um, that calculates out to $3.7 million. That $3.7 million is critical um, to us because with 296 additional students, it equates to um, staffing increases. It inc includes benefits for the staffing increases. It includes supplies and materials, instructional supplies and materials for those additional students. It also includes technology upgrades and services for the um, rise in, in population. It includes um, the effective school solution program, which is needed as we're seeing particularly the middle school growing next year. Um, and I'll give you some of those statistics. We're, we're at 342 students in the middle school right now. We're anticipating um, anywhere between 440 and 450 students at the middle school next year. Um, it also includes architectural and legal costs for facilities planning because obviously with our enrollment growing um, continuously in the district and we also know that development is continuing in the city, uh, we have no other option as the sport has been discussing, to look into facilities planning for um, future renovations and building. Um, we also are increasing um, uh, our dollar figure that's in the budget for Passport to Learning for the additional students and also the expansion of some um, co-curricular and athletic programs due to increased participation. So as the population expands, our programs expand, and so the budget has to expand. This um, $3.7 million for the enrollment adjustment waiver, calculating out how many students will be in each of our seats next year and how many additional sections we need for next year, it equates to 23 additional staff members, um, as well as, as an additional clerk. 
The 23 additional staff members, just to give you a little idea, um, it includes uh, additional staff at the elementary school level, uh, 11 classroom teachers at the elementary school level. It includes um, six teachers at the middle school level, and the remaining teachers would be related arts teachers that have to be added to meet the needs within the schedule. Um, so with that being said, that's all embedded within this um, increase for the enrollment adjustment. Okay, Melanie? Related arts teachers. Yeah, related arts teachers. So every time there's additional sections that are added, um, there has to be additional related arts teachers that are added. So next year's middle school will have six additional sections um, compared to what it has this year. Okay. All right, so at this time, I'll turn it over to Joyce to begin to uh, discuss the operating budget. Okay, good morning to everyone, and thank you for attending this meeting. <coughs> Our operating budget, as Dr. Johnson has said, is total $65,324,803. Those dollars are broken out as follows. $53,114,030 $53 is going to be the general fund tax levy for fiscal year 2021. <clears throat> We're anticipating a $1.5 million budgeted fund balance. What that means is from this year's budget, we will reserve $1.5 million, which would be earmarked for next year's budget. Um, tuition and fees, we're anticipating receiving $130,000. Rents and royalties, right now, we're anticipating $1,025,000. Miscellaneous revenue is five hundred and twenty thousand um two hundred and four dollars what miscellaneous revenue is <clears throat> is a hundred and eleven thousand six hundred and thirty three dollars of it is the medicare reimbursement um private contributions were estimated to be roughly about forty six thousand two hundred and seventy one dollars Unrestricted miscellaneous revenues were anticipating $360,000. That is the same dollar amount that we anticipated receiving for this fiscal year. Um, then we have another $2,300 that we're anticipating receiving in interest um, from our banking institution. <clears throat> Our preschool contribution for next year is anticipated to be $344,820. What that means is the district's budget will support preschool by budgeting this $344,820 um, to the preschool program. Joyce, can I just jump in? Sure. Just real quick on that one. Just so everyone knows and does not get confused. We are not contributing to the Abbott Universal Preschool Program. The three hundred and forty-four plus thousand dollars is for the seats that are filled by preschool children in our preschool disabilities program. That program is separate and apart from the Universal Abbott Preschool. Okay. Um, the state of New Jersey <clears throat> for the preschool program, um, their estimated budget to fund that program is fifteen million. Three hundred thirty-five thousand seven eighty-nine. So the total anticipated preschool program budget for next year is fifteen million six hundred eighty thousand six oh nine. Are there any questions at this point? Okay, then I'll go on. Can I go one more time? Oh, sure. Okay. Um, I I apologize. One one more thing with the preschool budget. Just so you know, the funding that the state approved includes an additional four pre-K classrooms. Okay. Um, we have. I'm sorry. Say again. Uh, yeah, we currently have 69. So. Mm -hmm. It's nice that the population is growing. It's incredible. Um, for our non-public programs from the state, um, they're granting us four hundred and sixty-four thousand four dollars. And for federal programs, which is restricted, which would be uh, ESSA, which is formerly known as No Child Left Behind, and IDEA, 
we're estimating that we will receive uh, $1.6 million. Now the $1.6 million is 75% of what we received this year. So this number is low. We cannot budget at the full level because we don't know uh, exactly how much the state is going to grant us. So 75% is being very conservative. So anything above that is, you know, it's a benefit to our budget. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, our current appropriations would be 53 excuse me, $54,450,230. Charter schools, which are down slightly for next school year, is $10,339,573. Now, um, so note that the um, charter school um, division did not anticipate in, uh, increase in any charter school seats at any charter school in Hoboken. So the report says zero for all the charter schools, so um, that's why we're seeing the reduction in charter school uh, aid for next year. Now in the event that um, charter schools do increase their seats, what happens is the state does a readjustment in January, and what they will do is they will either adjust the figure up to the level of the students in the charter school, or if there are less students, they will adjust that figure down. January 2020, actually the charter schools received less funding, so it was a cost savings to the district because the charter school numbers went down um, in September, between September and December, so that's why we saw a reduction in charter school aid for this school year. Can I just jump in, Joyce? Yes. When you say um, numbers went down, it just means the Hoboken residents at the charter schools Correct. went down, not in totality. Correct. Okay. So, and and on that one, it there's also the opposite side of the coin. It it could also just simply mean that the original projection done by the Department of Education was off. We've seen that before, where we've had some years where the charter school projections were spot on. We've seen some years where they've been low, and we've seen some years that they've been high. Um, having been here five years. I'm very um, cautious of a projected number of zero. That that is that is not necessarily what has what we have seen. So as a result of that, I think we all need to be prepared um, for the fact that the January adjustment may not be in our favor. Um, this current school year it was in our favor by about 153,000. Mm -hmm. um, but we have seen it in the past where it was 800,000 on the other side that, that we owed. So zero is, um, I, I'm, I'm a little skeptical about that. So we, we need to keep our eye on, on what that number looks like. Okay. <clears throat> so... Um, and then capital outlay, $535,000. The $535,000 for capital outlay, $500,000 is budgeted in this budget for the architect, um, for all the planning and um, whatever services related to the anticipated referendum in September. The $35,000 is for legal fees just for the referendum. Now, once the referendum passes in September, then this money will be spent out of the referendum and not out of the budget. So what would happen is in next year's budget, this money will be refunded to the district taxpayers. Any questions? So I want to make some clarifying statements. <coughs> we um, right now are in a planning process for the long-range facilities plan. We do not know um, for certain whether or not we will have a referendum. The dollar figures that we are showing are for the architect to actually create plans so that we can decide whether or not that's something that will happen. 
what the business administrator is indicating is if by some chance there is a referendum that occurs in the following school year, that those funds in any school district get rolled back into the referendum um, and costs. So they go back to, for example, the taxpayer. Um, but I want to make it very clear that we do not have a scheduled um, referendum at this point. We are just in conversation about whether or not we need to continue to grow um, our buildings. So that brings our total to the $65,324,803. We at this point have no debt service. <clears throat> Any questions? Our transportation cost, um, our student transportation cost, uh, is, is increasing next year by $129,960. Um, and our special ed cost tuition for next year is anticipated to be $2.6 million. Any questions? And that's for out of district students only. That's not special education costs for in district students. Any questions? Okay. Yes. I'm sorry. For the tuition? Transportation is an increase. What happened this year is um, we had additional students leaving the district, so we had to provide, obviously, additional transportation. And then what we had also this year, we had a vendor um, who went out of business. And when we had to rebid the route, the route came in a lot higher than what we had approved earlier in the year. So that is what caused our transportation costs to increase. Our um, out-of-district placement costs for special education students, we had throughout the year sent out um, a number of students to out-of-district placements. Um, the out-of-district placement tuition along with related services is what drives up the special education costs. Yes. No, it's not. So note that the state of New Jersey does not allow you to put a buffer in special education. So what happens is you have to put actual. So you have to have an actual student name, an actual student placement, the actual related uh, services. And what happens is the state of New Jersey for the private schools provides, you with, provides us with what the tuition will be for the next school year. Correct. Absolutely. And that's the financial section of the budget. Any questions? Yes. Just a clarification. Yes. Yes. No, that's the total of the 2%. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it, oh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I'm sorry. And so note that the anticipated salary increase straight across the board um, is included in this number. Okay. So the 2% also, so you know, like every year we have a budget and a 2% <coughs> two, two tax levy, as well as any adjustments that we would would need to see. Um, this budget plus the 2% tax levy has been created with um, the state aid reduction. I want you to keep that in mind. Correct. So we have a entire budget with a state aid reduction with the 2% tax levy cap. The 2% tax levy cap um, was, was put out there so that districts could deal with um, Tr um, typical rising operating costs. The, the enrollment adjustment waiver, which is separate and apart, we kind of wanted to break out why we needed to take 
that particular waiver. We needed to take that particular waiver because if we were to include all of the costs that were associated with the additional 296 students and try and put that into the budget with the 2% tax levy, it, it doesn't work. There's a, and that is the exact reason why the Department of Education provides districts with the ability to utilize a particular waiver. Okay. And just on that, the, the waiver, it's not a disc discretionary percentage. They, based on your numbers, the state right. gives you a specific percentage that you are eligible to take. Is yes, that and everyone has this, and it's in. you'll see the waiver uh, information within the budget. I will email you exactly what page it's on so you could see how the state calculates that out. Also note that um, our school choice aid for next year is being reduced by $153,164 and our adjustment aid is being reduced by $696,195 for a total state aid reduction of $849,359. Now, <coughs> excuse me, we were anticipating a state aid reduction and we received it. Okay. Any other questions? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Vicki, any emails? Okay. Um, okay, now I guess we'll move on to public comments on agenda items. I don't think we have any um, and no emails in. Um, so there are a few other items on the agenda. Does anyone have any questions on those? If not, we'll move to the consent agenda. If you could please, uh, is there a motion? Who made it? And who second I? Okay. Please call the roll. <clears throat> Ms. Catamatori. Ms. Zalera. Yes. Mr. Delator. Yes. Ms. Connor. Yes. Mr. Clubful. Yes. Ms. McGurk. Yes. Ms. Simmons. Yes. Mr. Carrier. Yes. Ms. Angley. Yes. Motion passes. Okay, public comments on agenda and non-agenda items. I think there are none. Um, Ms. Angley, can I make one comment about sure. the motion regarding the tele? Yes. Um, yep. So, so there's a motion on the agenda to provide us with the ability to operate board meetings um, remotely um, if in the event this were to happen again or continue um, before our next meeting. Um, we, it's a very general resolution that requires us to put together a policy and regulations around. Um, obviously, in the development of a new policy and regulations, it requires two readings. So it would take us probably well past the time. So what we will do is put um, some standard operating procedures together around that particular motion and circulate them among the board to get some input and and feedback will utilize those standard operating procedures until the policy is actually written and adopted. Okay, okay. thank you. Um, okay, so that concludes our meeting. Um, as I said earlier, we'll have a few months now to dive into the budget, ask Ms. Good um, and Dr. Johnson um, additional questions that we have, um, and we will go from there and vote on the budget in May. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Mm -hmm.